Hello friends, and welcome back to Shelley Skyline's Briz Vegas. If you're new here, Briz Vegas is my little city, based on the real city of Brisbane, Australia, and we're doing our best to recreate it as realistically as the game allows us. So this isn't just a regular City Skylines video. This is a cool City Skylines video with bonus history and education. So let's get into it. Today, we're getting back into the history of Brisbane and specifically the suburb of Fortitude Valley, a place that holds many special memories for me for so many reasons. There's a lot to unpack here. So we're going to start with this side of the city over here and work our way over, possibly across a few episodes. So let's get into the zone and take a look through the archives of some of the notable places in the area and see how we can use them in our build. So first of all, as cool as the name Fortitude Valley is, it's customary to refer to it simply as the valley. But the Fortitude Park comes from the first settlers of the area who arrived on the vessel the Fortitude. It appears they came under the impression that they would gain access to some free land in the newly established Brisbane. However, it was not the case. They were forced to set up a temporary settlement a bit north of the valley around where Victoria Park is today. And they gave this general area the name Fortitude Valley. This was considered a pretty distant settlement at the time, given the hilly terrain that divided it from the CBD along Ann Street. But by the late 1850s, there were roughly 150 houses established in the area. By the late 1800s, it transformed from a modest village into a bustling urban center, marked by the expansion of infrastructure, commercial establishments, and like most parts of Brisbane we've looked at so far, the catalyst for a lot of this development was the integration of transportation like railways. Trams also offered the main means of access to the valley, turning it into a key shopping hub during the 1950s to the 1970s. But more on this in the next episode. In the late 70s and 80s, Fortitude Valley took a bit of a downturn and got a bit of a reputation as a seedy part of Brisbane, becoming known for sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There was a lot of police corruption fueling a lot of this activity at the time, as found through the Fitzgerald Inquiry. I don't know of any illegal gambling. If there's any going on, well then of course, I don't know where it is. One of the most notable events from this era would have to be the Whiskey A Go Go nightclub arson attack in 1973, in which 15 lives were lost. And at the time, this was actually the worst mass murder that had occurred in Australia until Port Arthur happened some years later. And just a year prior, in 1972, the communist building just up the road on St Paul's Terrace also fell victim to a bombing. This took place in the building that is now home to one of Australia's first independent youth radio stations, 4 Triple Z. With their first broadcast happening in 1975, it was created to provide a radical alternative to mainstream news, with a focus on providing a platform for local Australian artists and to promote a sense of engagement and activism in community life. Changing pace just a little bit, just nearby to 4 Triple Z we have 100 Wickham Street, previously the home of Web Central, AAPT, and a few other internet and telco companies. I actually used to work here, so you'll just have to indulge me a little bit. This is probably an insignificant building to most people, but if you're a geek like me, there is a lot of important internet history that went on here as well. So before they were known as Web Central, they started as Power Up Internet in late 1987 and grew to become Queensland's largest internet service provider. And I actually found some of their old plans and prices. So for those younger kids watching, check out how much we used to pay for internet back in my day. In the year 2000, the founders split the Power Up ISP businesses and the Web Central web hosting business. I started working there around 2005. So Nicholas will talk to Shelley. And at that time, Web Central was hosting some of the largest and most popular websites like The Wiggles and the Whirlpool Internet Forums. I ended up working there for about five years and this place truly shaped me into the person I am today. Learning all about web hosting, servers, DNS. Yeah, that's just how long DNS takes to update across the internet. This is where I knew I wanted to work in IT and established my career. And it's where I found some of my most long lasting and treasured friendships. Now at the back of Web Central is Barry Parade, and this is quite a small and quiet street relative to the rest of the valley, full of random commercial businesses, a servo, taxi depots and the like. I never really thought about it, but a lot of these buildings are quite old and even heritage listed. Like Rosie Cafe, where we'd go for coffee on our breaks from calls at Web Central. Even these car places have a bit of history. I found this image from 1933, challenging folks to guess how many tires in the tire tower Sadly, the events of this competition were never published, so we will never know the answer. 
So I only covered a couple of streets here even, and so much interesting and varied history. Let us finally start the valley build and get in some of these roads and buildings. Starting with Ann Street. This runs right from the CBD and through to the center of the valley and will help us form a bit of a guideline for the other streets along it. And coming off here, we also have Wickham Street and parallel to this is St. Paul's Terrace, which we laid down when we built out Spring Hill. And just below that, we have McLaughlin Street and also Ivory Street. Ivory Street is a bit of a loop-de-loop -loop kind of situation, which has two exits. One that goes underground through a bit of a tunnel and over to the CBD, and one that gives you access to the Story Bridge. So I did actually preemptively get rid of the old Story Bridge before starting this because I just knew it was going to be out of alignment, so I'll draw that back in as well. So let's just try and finesse this all a little bit and see how we go. Now I didn't get to mention this in the history recap, but there's a cute little park here just on Wickham Street across the road from Web Central known as Centenary Place. It's actually a heritage listed park originally designed to commemorate the European settlement in Queensland. Now we may have opinions on whether something like this is worth celebrating, but I suppose at the time they were pretty chuffed with themselves and all the growth they'd achieved in Queensland over the last 100 years. So the park was built in 1924, and it's actually ended up a relatively quaint little park. Nothing too fancy. A statue or two and some nice wavy paths and benches and trees. And it nicely fills up this little space along this main thoroughfare from the CBD to Brisbane. Now let's look at Brunswick Street. This is the main road that would run right through the middle of the valley and leads you to the northern suburbs and to the south to New Farm. And I'll also draw in the rest of Barry Parade, which hugs the back of Web Central and where 4ZZZ lives. Now it didn't start out this way, but the middle of Brunswick Street has been turned into a pedestrian mall, and you know how much we love those on this channel. So I'll also put in some of these surfaces to create a spot for the mall so I don't forget, but we'll be decorating that one in the next episode. Okay, and you can see I've also put one of these colleges here. This is All Hallows School, a girls college that was founded in 1861 and it's actually the oldest surviving secondary school in Brisbane. But you know what, I'm getting tired of all the road building so it's time to satisfy my craving for some fine shrubbery and decorate this fine little park.
Next, I'm thinking we'll go over to 4 triple Z. I was thinking it makes perfect logical sense to put the radio tower here. And then I'll put in a couple of row houses to mimic that same skinny building where 4 triple Z resides. And of course, Web Central. I'll use the Ploppable Rico mod to try and find a suitable building and we'll see if we like it. I think that will do. So I definitely think we need some servos and you can see the terrain is definitely terraining. And it is very hilly here, but there's kind of a retaining wall behind these shops along here. So I'll try and recreate that as best as I can. And I think as well this is going to be a good chance to try some real specific detailing around here. I was hoping there would be some tires in the dev tools to create the tire tower, but sadly not. Besides that, there's a lot of rubble and construction and mismatched bitumen paths and stuff. Wow, not bad. It's starting to take shape. And even for Triple Z, they even have these little dishes on the outside. That is perfect. Now I talked about some of the history of 4 Z, but something else I love is the kind of programming they have on. When I mentioned they focus on giving a voice to those that don't typically have one in our society, some of their programming features shows like The Anarchy Show, The Locked In Prisoners Request Show, and Dykes on Mics. So super cool that it's been going since the 70s and still going strong today. Now, I absolutely loved doing this little spot here, but it was so hard on this hilly terrain, but I refused to make a flat Brisbane. And speaking of detailing, I distinctly recall this post box being out the front here. So you go in there. Now on the front of Web Central along Wickham Street, there's just some commercial type buildings and they look a little bit like the mixed use ones. So I think I'll use those here. And I'll also keep referring to Google Street View to even try and get the trees along the streets as close as I can. Also around here we have Cathedral Place, a pretty big block of apartments taking up this little section here along Wickham Street. I didn't actually know this, but they got this name because around the time they were building Centenary Place, they had plans to put a huge cathedral here, but it never eventuated. Instead, you get some apartments. Now it's kind of hilly here and I didn't actually find really what I'm looking for, so I'll probably come back and redo this at some stage. But good to have some buildings here for now. So we might just do a bit of random zoning around the place and see how it fills out. And I also found this spot on St. Paul's Terrace that's a bit of a construction zone. So I'll use some more of those dev tools to give this a bit of realism here. And then just some final sprucing up with some fine shrubbery and let's see where we get to. So we have the entry to the valley down Wickham Street with All Hallows and Centenary Park. Moving back to Web Central along Barry Parade and heading up to 4 Z towards the Valley Fiveways. 
and we have the general road structure for the next part of the build to commence. We'll be focusing on the shopping and trams and some railway in the next episode, so stay tuned. And if you want to know how we got here, you can check out my Briz Vegas playlist over here. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.